Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. I have a reflection today on the subject of murderous health care. You know, on this uh, channel, I've spoken many times about giving the physician his proper due. Of course, this is the counsel of the 38th chapter of Sirach, that portion of Holy Scripture that has the most concentrated appreciation of the role of the physician. And in fact, we have a long history of doctor saints, of unmercenary healers in the church that show us what it means to be a Christian physician. Uh, what it means to actually be a healer, not just of the body, but of the soul, and to do it for the right reasons and in a way that pleases God, that supports uh, basic morality, medical ethics. Uh, unfortunately, my reflection today is not on something so positive uh, about medicine or about uh, the saintliness of doctors and nurses, although, of course, I'm always interested in that subject, and I'm just suggesting to you a incredible text. It's called The Birth of the Hospital in the Byzantine Empire, showing the natural progression of uh, alms ministries, healing ministries, uh, and the growth of the church, and the fact that hospitals as we know them today, uh, their basic origin is in the growth of the church in ancient times. No, today I want to talk about uh, murderous physicians. I want to talk about healthcare that has lost its mind. And this murderous healthcare has shown its really ugly face uh, in this last week through two really awful uh, revelations. Uh, the first is that the University of California system, the, the, our, our state college system, both the UC system and the Cal State system, have uh, been pursuing more and more aggressively secular types of medicine. And sadly, the UC system dissolved its contracts uh, this last week. At least they notified people that they had made a decision, that the Board of Regents had made a decision to dissolve its contracts with many Catholic hospitals. They did this because they protested that these Catholic hospitals were Catholic, <laughs> that they, in fact, were doing medicine as Christians had always done medicine. That is, hospitals are not places to murder unborn children, and so Catholic hospitals don't perform abortions, nor do they promote contraception, nor do they uh, perform sex change surgeries. This is long-standing traditional Christian medical ethics that Catholic universities, uh, uh, Catholic hospitals rather, adhere to. The University of Cal California has always collaborated with Catholic hospitals. Of course, there are many, many Catholic hospitals, not just in California, but all across the country and all throughout the world. But the UC system has said, quote, this is now culturally inappropriate, unquote, and also that to continue their contractual relationships with these Catholic hospitals would be harmful and traumatic for people in the LGBTQ community, unquote. Well, there you have it. There you have it. I, I grieve at how often I have to point out that um, of what we priests warned about decades ago, literally 25 years ago, as we saw the aggressive ascendancy of the LGBT movement, which is the most intolerant uh, movement of recent decades. We warned then that there would be, it's not a matter of legitimacy in their minds, it's not a matter of acceptance. They will never rest until Christians are under their feet and made to grovel. And here we have it again. It's not about just acceptance. No, it is about uh, banning Christian hospitals from having any relationship with the UC system or the Cal State system because these Christian hospitals are actually Christian. And they're claiming now that these Catholic hospitals, by simply performing their Catholic medicine are causing trauma to the LGBT community. I see. A second revelation of this last week about the state of murderous healthcare in America was a terrible um, 
new episode, in the words of my dear friend David Delighton, such a modern hero, uh, this incredible modern Maccabee who at great personal risk has uh, labored to expose the underbelly of the abortion movement, and especially their harvesting of baby body parts, um, often collecting them not just from uh, recent abortions, but even from children who were aborted while alive, had their heart, their their parts, kidney portions, heart portions, liver portions, retinas, can you imagine, taken from their bodies. David and his Center for Medical Progress, together with Judicial Watch, through a request for freedom of inform using the Freedom of Information Act, revealed that the University of Pittsburgh has received millions of dollars from the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, this is uh, a major department, federal department, under which is the National Institutes for Health, NIH. And the University of Pittsburgh has been doing research using baby body parts and has paid with taxpayer money millions of dollars. I think this was mostly at the end of President Obama's term, 2015 or so, uh, to perform uh, research. And it's quite clear, uh, according to David and according to the uh, published articles that these babies, many of these babies were um, born alive and only subsequently killed after their body parts were removed. Hideous, hideous, hideous. Wow. Should we give doctors their place? Yes, we should give doctors their place. And especially doctors of reason doctors of medical ethics that are respectable, doctors of Christian culture, uh, not of the culture that the UC regions describe uh, as being uh, inappropriate for Christian ethics, Christian medical ethics. We should give doctors their place, but dear ones, have we not learned in the last 18 months that Plato was right? That when he wrote his Republic and he suggested that there was one type of person who sh certainly should not rule. Philosopher King should rule, he suggested, but not doctors. Give doctors their place, yes. Heed the scriptures and especially honor the pious ones, those that represent the love and compassion of Christ in healing people. And don't kill and don't murder, especially the most innocent, the unborn. Give them their place, but don't let them rule. Doctors, especially secular doctors, don't know how to manage uh, a variety of goods. They see physical health uh, and, and they exalt it to a place uh, in which uh, the love of God is not supreme, but physical health is supreme. Morality is no longer supreme, but su must submit itself to the propagation of physical health. And as Americans, we have to remember, not only is God supreme, and following his ways, maintaining Christian morality supreme above any, in, in comparison with any physical health outcome. Certainly liberty as well. It's a classic American saying, give me liberty or give me death. Doctors would have you healthy and enslaved. Secular doctors, healthy and killing unborn children. Murderous health care has got to go. May the Lord look with mercy and compassion upon our culture and visit us like he visited the Ninevites with cultural repentance. God be with you. Now available at patristicnectar.org. Patristic Nectar is pleased to offer a new nine-part series entitled The Mother of God in Our Lives. This offering is the fruit of a three-day conference hosted by Patristic Nectar Publications a collaboration of many clergy scholars, including the keynote speaker, His Grace, Bishop Irenae of London, Archimandrite Maximus Constas, Father Kalinik Berger, Father Chad Hatfield, and Father John Parker. The lectures are dedicated to an edifying examination of the great feasts of the Mother of God as well as additional lectures on particular aspects of the life of the Most Holy Theotokos and her role in the lives of Christian believers. For these and other available titles, 
please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.